Welcome to the New Testament Bible study presented by the Gatlinburg Church of Christ. I'm David Barton. The Apostle Paul, writing to the young man Timothy, encouraged him to rightly divide the word of truth. Now, Paul's encouragement both then and even now is to know and to study uh, God's Let's word. Let's bow with a word of prayer as we begin. Father in heaven, we're grateful and thankful for the period privilege of study. Grateful, Father, for the written Word that we can open the Bible and read and understand Your will for our lives. We're grateful, Father, that You have placed within Jesus the Christ all spiritual blessings and that You have blessed us, Father, with access. When, may we live in such a way as to be worthy, Father, the best of our abilities of those blessings. Use us. Continue to be with us. We're grateful for this time of study. In Jesus' name, and amen. Welcome to the New Testament Bible study. Our lesson today is taken once again from Ephesians chapter 4. I remember the theme of the Ephesian letter from back in that first chapter at verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Now today we will look at the seven ones that Paul presents in this fourth chapter. There is one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God. Turn with me to those first six verses of Ephesians chapter 4 and let's read along together. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. The religious world today would agree on perhaps four of those seven. So today let's take them one by one and briefly examine each of those seven ones in the light of the Scriptures, in the light of God's Word. Let's begin with there is one body. In Ephesians chapter 1, Paul establishes that Christ is the head of the church, which is His body. In verses 22 and 23, Paul writes, And He, speaking of God, put all things in subjection under His, speaking of Christ, under Christ's feet, and gave Him, Christ, as head over all things to the church, notice, which is His body, the fullness of Him who fills all in all. In Matthew chapter 16 at verse 18, Jesus said, I will build my church. In Colossians 1 in verse 18, Paul writes, Christ is the head of the body, the church. In the New Testament, the church is clearly presented as part of God's eternal plan for gathering all of those who are saved into one body. God's plan did not include a Jewish body or a separate Gentile body in the first century, nor does his plan call for different denominational bodies today. There is one body of baptized believers that have been added to the church that Christ promised to build. Acts 2.47, And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. The second of the ones, there is one spirit. Paul is declaring that there is one Holy Spirit. Now this is the third person of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Remember Paul's plea in verse 3 of our lesson text was for the unity of the Spirit. Now listen to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 uh, and verse 13. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jew or Greeks, whether slave or free. We were all made to drink of one spirit. And that same spirit is still guiding faithful Christians today through God's Word. 
the third of those ones. There is one hope of your calling. We're called by the gospel to follow Jesus Christ. He is our hope, our only hope of eternal life with God. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 27, Paul writes on that occasion, To whom God will to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. Notice the hope of glory. In Timothy, the first chapter of the first letter, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the commandment of God our, faith, our Savior and Jesus Christ, who is our hope. For you see, Jesus is our one only hope of eternal life. For there is no one else. There is no other name given among heaven by which we must be saved. That's found in Acts chapter 4. There is one Lord. That's the fourth of those seven ones. The one Lord is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. In Acts 2 and verse 36, Therefore let all of the house of Israel know for certain that God had made Him, speaking of Jesus, both Lord and Christ, this same Jesus whom you crucified. And in Romans chapter 10 at verse 12, Paul writes on that occasion, For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call upon Him. There was not one Lord for the Jews and another Lord for the Gentiles back in the first century. Jesus was and is the one Lord of all, both back then and even today. There is but one Lord. And Jesus is that one Lord. He's the head of the one body, the church. Now, Matthew chapter 28, Jesus says of himself, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. In Philippians chapter 2, at verse 11, Paul writes that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, friend, every tongue means every person should confess that Jesus is Lord. In Acts chapter 10 at verse 36, the word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, He, Christ, is the Lord of all. And then there's that fifth one, there is one faith. Jude in that simple epistle that he writes, in verse 3, he says, Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. Now Paul in our lesson text and Jude in his epistle used the same Greek word for faith. The word means a system of religious truths as revealed in and through God's Word. Paul in our lesson text says that there is one faith. Jude describes it as the faith. The Christian faith is a set of truths, a set of teachings that Jude says was once for all times delivered to us. And there is within the faith an unchangeable quality. The teachings were delivered to us, and friend, they're not subject to change. Remember what the Hebrew writer says about Jesus? In chapter 13 at verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And friend, so are His teachings they are not subject to man's changes. And found within that one faith, within this system of religious truths, Jew says that there is a common salvation. Jesus in Mark chapter 16 sends the apostles into all the world to proclaim that, that common salvation to all of mankind. 
In verses 15 and 16 of Mark chapter 16, And Jesus said unto them, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And then we come to that sixth one. There is one baptism. The New Testament is clear on the method and purpose of that one baptism that's part of God's plan of salvation. Jesus in the Great Commission presented baptism as an essential element of salvation. We are buried in baptism into Jesus Christ. There is a very beautiful symbolism between baptism and the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. For see, we are buried in baptism and raised to a new life in Jesus. We have put off the old ways and put on Jesus. Galatians 3 verse 27 says, For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. At the conclusion of the first recorded gospel sermon in Acts chapter 2, notice Peter's instruction to those who were pricked in their hearts. Acts 2 and verse 38, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Notice, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The one baptism is a burial. It's an immersion into Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Now, baptism is the major difference between God's plan of salvation and what many in the religious world teach and preach today. As you know, many teach salvation by faith only. They practice and teach that baptism is not necessary for salvation. They either don't understand or they choose to ignore God's instructions and His teachings concerning baptism. For see, it's simple obedience that leads to baptism that cleanses us of all of our sins. The Apostle Peter understood the role that baptism and obedience plays in God's plan of salvation. In 1 Peter 3 and verse 21, and corresponding to that, baptism now saves you. Not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. In baptism, we humbly submit our will to God's will. We come to Him on His terms according to His plan. He that believeth and is baptized will be saved, are still the words of Jesus recorded in Mark chapter 16. God's plan of salvation includes baptism for the remission of sins. And then there's that final one, there is one God. He is the creator. He's the giver of life. He's the all-wise, all-powerful Jehovah God of heaven. He's the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. He's the living God who sent His only begotten Son He's a loving, caring God. He is our Heavenly Father. James writes, You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. So Paul boldly declares, There is one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God. So the question comes, Are you one with Jesus Christ? Are you in that one body that Jesus died for on Calvary's cross? Remember the verse from Hebrews chapter 8 we quoted earlier? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that, friend, does apply to his teachings as well. His teachings have not changed. The gospel is still the power of God that leads to salvation. God's grace and an obedient faith that leads to the one baptism is his eternal plan for saving all of mankind. So to be saved in a relationship with God, you must be willing to follow all of His teachings concerning salvation. God has done His part of making salvation even possible by Jesus' death on Calvary's cross. So friend, if you have questions about your salvation, please contact us at the Gatlinburg Church of Christ. We would love to sit down and talk with you about the gospel plan of salvation as revealed in the pages of the New Testament. Thank you for studying with us today. May God bless you. Thank you for watching the New Testament Bible study. If you have comments or questions about today's study, write to us at the Gatlinburg Church of Christ. 
P.O. Box 361, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, 